Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, this is going to be like three link part three. So what we're going to do is we are going to start finishing up this three link. Um, in order to do that, we're going to install a pan hard bar uh, mount on the back of the chassis here. We're also going to start working on our actual link bars, our three links. We got hardware on order for them that should be here this weekend. Hopefully I can get some uh, shop time in to get those done. And then we're just waiting for our housing. So uh, our housing is going to be coming from Quick Performance. We got a Grand National floater housing, and uh, we're going to get that thing dropped in here and start welding it up, hopefully in this episode. So we'll see uh, how far we go along and how long it takes to get the parts in. Uh, but for now, let's get started. Okay, so for our pan hard bar mount, it's gonna the basic design is pretty simple. What we're gonna do, uh, first of all, the pan hard on the frame is gonna mount on the passenger side on the frame, and then on the uh, driver's side, or I'm sorry, other way around. Driver's side on the frame, passenger side on the uh, actual diff. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mount, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole here in the chassis. We're gonna insert a tube that's bent at a 90 degree angle down, like a little kicker leg, dog leg here. And then we're gonna have another tube that's welded onto that, coped at a 45 degree angle that's gonna go up and connect up in there. So that's gonna give us sort of that uh, stability in the axial load direction, axial in terms of the actual column or the rod. But um, that's gonna give us the support we need to keep that pan hard in there nice and, and sturdy. And we're gonna drill a hole through here to locate it and run it through the other side. So this will be a double-sided weld on here and a single-sided weld on there. Then when we have the tube in here, there'll be a bracket that kicks out this way a little bit, and it'll be sort of like that, but uh, not quite as uh, many adjustments, but then we'll have that uh, here, and that'll pass the pan hard bar back over to the diff. We gotta be careful with our measurements here, make sure we're dead on, because our coilovers are gonna mount up here on the chassis and come down uh, to the diff, and we don't have a whole lot of extra clearance for the drop leg, so this is sort of a tight area with a lot of stuff going on. So we need to be very accurate. What we're going to use for material wise is we're gonna use this inch and a quarter uh, right here and make the bracket, or not the bracket, but the- So we're making the bracket out of three sixteenths inch plate. I don't know why the audio kicked off here, but just wanted to fill that in. Okay, so you saw me finish up those tubes. Unfortunately, the camera kicked off when I was actually bending them up, but nothing too crazy there. Just bending a 45 on this one and a 90 degree on this one. I left a little bit of overhang here on this tube. You can see I have probably about an inch and a half there. And then up here, I have it fit pretty nice. So if you look at it, how this is gonna work is this tube will be welded on after. This tube here will be passed through the chassis. This will butt against the uh, passenger side frame rail. The driver side frame rail is gonna be somewhere right in this region. And then this bar will come up and connect to the tube here. So it's sort of an offset from center. Um, and then in this region, you're going to have a bracket that welds to the inside here at a 90 degree. And then it has sort of a bend down and out uh, as we view it here, uh, forward on the truck and then the bracket holes will be in this region. So that should work out pretty good. Um, I'm thinking that this brace should be plenty strong for the axial loads that's gonna be put on it. If I feel like it needs a little bit more bracing, uh, I could miter in a section here. Uh, and if I need any uh, forward and aft, if I'm worried about pan hard thrust, which there should be very, 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 very little of, um, I could always do uh, like a tie into the back of the, the frame riser. But for now, this is what we're gonna do. And uh, next up, we'll get the brackets cut out and get that sort of situated. But um, actually, before we do that, I think we're gonna drill the frame and cut the hole in the chassis and then pass this through and get the rest of this excess trimmed off uh, where we want it. So that's it for now. I'm gonna go inside and call it a night, but I'll be back to you guys in just a sec. Okay, so we're gonna get this marked out. I need to come eight and a half inches back from center line, and I need to come up from the frame table 
uh, 15.75 inches. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm just gonna go off of this relative location because that's where this is all gonna be based off of. Come up here, trace out a line, and we're just gonna run it on this side and we'll do the same thing on that side because we wanna make sure that when we put the uh, tubing through, we don't get any offset. So get started on that. Okay, so obviously I got this tube cut really long, but you get the idea here. I drilled a hole in this side, a hole in this side, and then we just need to get this guy over here. Uh, you see that center line mark. When we tack him in, we'll have to make sure we're dead level, and we'll go ahead and put that across. Right now what I'm gonna do is this outside bar to here needs to be five and five eighths inches. So we're gonna have to lop off a good bit here. So we're gonna do this measurement, see how far off we are, and then take it off that side. Okay, so we got those welded in all nice. I'm happy with the welds. Everything looks good there. So we got the drop leg. So next we're gonna, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect that other piece that we cut and come up in here and uh, get that, go ahead and, and uh, get that all ticked up. And then we need to get on the plasma cutter. But first, let's get the drop leg in. Okay, so yesterday I said that I was going to get the plasma cutter fired up. We're gonna deviate from that slightly. Um, after the video yesterday, I noticed that this ever so slightly, if you really push it hard, you get a little forward and back movement. So we splice in this guy, this is a little seven eight inch uh, support tube. That's gonna take any thrust load that the uh, pan hard bar is gonna put on the chassis. Um, due to where your coil overs mount, and the uh, back of the diff, like that clearancing, you need to run a slightly angled pan hard bar to get in and nice and tight to the uh, diff, um, so or to the axle tube. So it's probably about a one inch offset. Today, what we're gonna do, if I don't get around to the plasma cutter, we're going to go ahead and start making up some three link bars. I got um, some kits from hymenrodend.com and we're gonna use these. We got a right hand, left hand combo on each bar. We're gonna make the upper link, the lower links, and the pan hard bar. And we're gonna go ahead and make those out of an inch and a quarter tubing, DOM, with a 120 wall. So these are pretty nice. They have high misalignment spacers on them. Uh, they're actually a three quarter inch high, and then the misalignment spacers take them down to five eighths. So gonna be plenty strong for anything we're gonna be doing. Um, but yeah, let's get started on that. Okay guys, so we got the bars cut out, the ends prepped. Um, on the upper link, I went ahead and drilled some uh, spot weld locations just to reinforce the upper link. It is the most stressed link in the entire deal. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get to welding these. I'm not sure how much of the prep work you guys saw on the camera because it cut out. So we're on the backup camera, but uh, I'm gonna get these all cleaned up and then we're gonna get ready to weld. Okay, so we have upper link bar done, 
both the bottom link bar is done and the pan hard bar is done. So these are really turned out nice and beefy. I'm happy with them. Uh, plenty of weld surface on there. This upper link that's got a real uh, high tension load on it, we went ahead and did a lower rosette weld on both ends here, so that will give a little bit of extra reinforcement. But uh, that's looking good. So the next thing, we need to get the plasma cutter all cleaned up, grind the grates down on it, fill it up with water, and cut out the three link mounts. Um, or I'm sorry, the pan hard bar mount that goes in the bracket we just did a little bit earlier. So. That's what we'll do next. Let's see what we can do. Okay guys, so we got uh, next day here, we're gonna go ahead and cut out some of these brackets that we need for the pan hard bar mount. I got some 3 16 inch plate up here. We're gonna cut out a section within this little section here. Uh, this is gonna be the pan hard mount plate and then there's gonna be the bracket we'll cut out over here a little bit later and then we'll cut out some gussets. So get started on that. All right, so we got these pieces cut it out, cut out rather. Um, what this is gonna do, this is gonna be up here. This piece right at this line is gonna be bent back this direction. Um, this side is gonna be bent forward. And then when that is bent up, this will be in there, okay? So that kind of makes sense. This, this side will be bent up and then the bolts will go through there. This will be bent back and this will be welded to the pan hard bar mount. So that is what we're gonna do next. We're gonna get this uh, all aligned and then uh, put some bends on it. Okay, so that was a struggle. Uh, this press, let me explain something. This is a swag offered press. This top plate is made for thinner gauge metals to give you a tighter bend radius. That's great, um, but it's not very robust with the way you can hold it. And when you get up into thicker materials that are longer, you have a tendency to spread. So what happened was these set screws kept slipping on me and popping out. So it's probably limited at the width of that I was doing an eighth inch material, but we were stretching to 3 sixteenths of an inch. I got it pretty close to 90, it's a little off, and there's a little bit of taper uh, in the mount, but that's all gonna be fine because realistically, this is a double high end on both ends, so I'm not really concerned about it. One thing I did notice, where the other, uh, uh, the die basically rubbed against it, it sort of oblong these holes out, which is sort of a weird look, but that's all gonna be fine. So how this is gonna work, this is gonna clip up in here. This plate is going to go in here like this, and that's gonna be our pan hard bracket. So not too shabby, but uh, definitely pushing the limits of that. I don't think I could get away with that again. And let me see if I can get a picture of this where it's gonna belong here. I'm gonna hold it up with one hand. Yeah, so it's gonna go in nice and pretty like that. So you get the idea, we'll set her in there. And then those gussets are going to go uh, back here and that's what's gonna tie it to this tube and keep it from rotating this way. So overall, I'm pretty happy, but uh, yeah, definitely put some strain on that, that press brake and that's definitely not good for the equipment. So I'll need to, get that corrected. So we'll go ahead, next thing we're gonna do, well, next thing you're gonna do is see me weld these up. Next thing I'm gonna do is go inside and go to sleep. So yeah, not too shabby. Okay, so we're back. I got the Himes, uh, one on each end here, and I got this sort of clamped in place here. We're gonna go ahead and burn this in, and then we'll be ready to weld it onto the truck. Okie dokie, so got this one all ticked up. Looks good, I'm happy with that. And what we're gonna do is mount it in here. So I'm gonna switch hands here. We got 
this will fit right down into here. So what I need to do is I need to do a little bit of uh, grinding. There you can see that tube kind of interferes slightly there. And then I need to take that corner off because the fillet weld goes there. But other than that, it's pretty good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it out by hand with a Sharpie and uh, just put some light notching on it uh, with a Sharpie and then we'll get to welding this up. But this will go here. We'll take all this whole thing on here and then we'll add gussets between here and between here. And I also need to uh, grind that weld down a little bit. But other than that, let's get started. Okay guys, so we got it all welded on. We got the gusset welded on as well. Pretty happy with how it turned out. This pan hard bar is gonna be plenty long. It's hard to show in here, but it's like 40 plus inches long. And uh, that's gonna sit real nice within the chassis. All the other ones here are all ready to go. So we got a lot done this episode. I'm happy with it. Um, I was hoping to get the uh, rear end this week, but it does not look like that's going to happen. Plus, by now, I'm pretty sure this episode is getting pretty long. So, we are going to call it off here for this episode. We're going to finish this up uh, probably in the next episode, get the diff, or I'm sorry, the rear housing uh, all welded up and then in centered in the truck. And uh, I'll walk you guys through that process, how we're going to lay that out. And I don't know, I'm thinking it's coming along pretty well. I'm happy with the progress. We started this in about November. It's March 20th today. So yeah, it's come a long way. Um, housing's next up. After that, we can start doing the outriggers for where the chassis or the uh, cab sits on. And then it's really time to start tearing down the truck and the other bay and uh, move along. So if you guys like what you saw this episode or if you have any questions or comments on things that we could do different, uh, please let me know. Uh, until next time, like and subscribe and uh, have a good one.